Welcome back. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And now to our first major conversation. It's almost 48 hours after queues resurfaced in Lagos and other parts of Nigeria. And almost 48 hours after those queues resurfaced, a tweet by a federal government uh, agency. A federal government regulatory body, the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, uh, gave fuel consumers in the country some clarity amidst what has been a chaotic and confusing few days for some and days of anguish for others who are still figuring out how to fix their broken down vehicles and who to hold responsible for the unexpected damage to their cars. Now, the statement released by the authority, uh, which wasn't signed by anyone, uh, provides some answers but leaves some serious questions unanswered, especially as the NNPC Limited, uh, the company which has the sole right to import fuel or petrol into Nigeria, was yet to make any statement about the situation the last time we checked. Now, joining us to throw some light and to give us explanations uh, and some analysis into this situation, we have uh, Mark Adebayo, who is a public affairs analyst, and also Nick Agule. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for joining us, and welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Thank you so much. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. What, what do you make of uh, the statement put out by the uh, National Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Agency? I think we're all trying to get used to uh, that name following the amalgamation of three agencies, the DPR, um, the PPPAR and the other one. Uh, what, what do you make of that statement put up by, by this authority, this agency? Uh, let's start with you, Mr. Mr. Uh, okay, you see, thank you so much. You see, the Nigeria Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Agency, NNDPR, and other agencies that are connected with uh, petroleum and petroleum products in Nigeria run with a lot of uh, opaqueness in their system. And so nobody can uh, can tell when what is true, what is not, what is fabricated, what is factual. So it does a lot of opaqueness in the petroleum industry in Nigeria. And the the earlier uh, that is tackled, the better. The, the major problem we have, okay, for instance, now you can see that uh, you can see that uh, NATO, the National Association of Road Transport Owners, are threatening strike, claiming they are being owed forty-five billion naira in bridging costs. But they claim that. They buy, uh, they, they buy automated. Uh, we seem to be having some issues with Mr. Adebayo's uh, uh, network connection. We apologize for that. Um, um, but uh, Mr. Gule, are you there, please? Uh, yes, I'm here. All right, we'll try to reconnect with uh, Mark Adebayo. Uh, your own take on, on the... the uh, okay, uh, Mark Adebayo, can you hear us? Okay, you have to unmute your, your your microphone so we can hear you. Can you please do that? Okay, Thank you very I much. think the network, I think the network uh, sort of tripped. In that not a problem. Case. Not a problem at all. So yes, you have given us your own your own take on the statement uh, by the NMDPRA. So you can continue, sir. Yeah, as in NATO, the National Association of Road Transport, now claim that they are being owed forty-five billion naira in bridging costs. That is, this money they pay them bridging costs because of the high, uh, because of the high cost of fertility gas oil, to which they to buy four and thirty naira per, per liter. So the federal government pays them what they call a bridging costs. But the chief executive officer of of NMDPR, Farouk Ahmed, claimed that between February. And between December 2021 and February uh, this year, the federal government has paid the top quarter for 52.7 billion naira as bridging cost. So now there's a lot of openness. Now the issue here is that who regulates, who monitors this bridging cost? How how do they make the claims? How do they come to uh, to the fact that they were paid 57 billion? 52.7 billion between December and now, and now they are still claiming that they are being owed 45 billion. So there's a lot of opaqueness, and then and the Nigerian masses are the victims of this opaqueness and insincerity on the part of regulatory agencies and the operators, and of course the government itself. So okay. the we have we have to deal, deal with that issue. And the one, one of the major problems that we have is that there 
is no punishment mm -hmm. for criminal indiscretion in this country. How could stop anyone bring into the country petroleum products that are high in methanol and ethanol in content? And who has been arrested? Like you said, the NPC is keeping quiet, the federal government is keeping quiet, there, is, there, there, there are claims and counter claims. That's not what we are looking at. This biting scarcity of petroleum products is skyrocketing, is further worsening the inflation rate of the country, are eating deep into the pockets of the of the United Nations. And that is where we should look into. I mean, I cannot understand why the government will keep quiet in this type of way. By now, I believe that whoever was responsible for bringing in high content metal and ethanol into the country, by now should, be, should clean his feet in, in, uh, in detection. Somebody must pay for this. But as in the Nigeria situation, if we just go like that, that nobody will pay for it. Who is going to pay for all those engines that have been knocked? Who is going to pay for people getting late to work? Who is going to pay for people Hmm. Not being able to carry their loved ones to the hospital. Mr. Mr. So, Mr. Debayo, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, interesting, you've pointed, you've pointed out who's going to pay and asking some important yeah. questions. Um, Nika, Nika Guli, um, um, this, this press release by the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, um, uh, which is a regulatory agency in, 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 in that sector, um, gives some, like we said in the intro, some answers, but leaves some questions unanswered. Uh, for instance, it's not even apologized to Nigerians at all. There's no apology in this statement. And, and we're not even told the, qu the quantity. Um, we ha we're having some noise in the background, so please, if there's anything on, on your system, kindly please attend to it, sir. Thank you. But, but we're not even told the quantity or, or the quantum of petrol uh, or fuel that is affected, so people can have an, a better understanding of the situation. From from our sources, we're hearing things like 80 million liters. Um, we're hearing things like 100 million liters, and there's a lot of speculation going around. You know, so what do you make of this statement? The fact that they, they said limited quantity of premium motor spirit, limited. You know, without giving a specific amount of of, of, of the quantity, you know, a specific number of figure of the quantity, rather, oh, uh, of, of, of the bad or dirty fuel. Well, thank you very much. Uh, before I answer your question, I want to say that this situation that we face now of fuel scarcity because of bad petrol imported into Nigeria is very shameful. Shameful in the sense that we are an oil-producing country. And as an oil producing country, we should be refining our crude oil and turning it into petroleum products. We rely on other countries to refine our own crude oil and send it back to us. Have we considered national security? In a situation where politics of the world, we make those countries to refuse to refine our petroleum products. What are we going to do? You know, so these are the kind of things that, you know, as Nigeria, we are doing that are very shameful and the international community will be laughing at us because we are the only oil producing country in the whole world that is doing this kind of shameful act of sending our crude and letting other people um, import it for us, I mean to refine it for us. How about if there is shipping blockade and ships are not able to move around? Just think about when COVID came and flights were grounded globally. If we have an incident like that, that affects shipping, how is Nigeria going to survive as a country? Since we don't have uh, capacity, we have the capacity, but we simply don't want to refine our food oil. So these are the things that Nigerians are fighting against. Now coming to the question, it is also very sad that the people who are in government look at us as their servants and they are the masters. And that is completely wrong. We, as citizens of Nigeria, are the masters. We own this country. The people we have either elected or appointed into government are our servants. And they owe us a duty to report to us accurately about what is happening in government. Imagine a servant refusing to report to his master. That is sacrilege. And that's what we're facing here. Nobody knows about the quantity of petrol that we're consuming in Nigeria. 
Nobody even knows the landing cost of this product. All these things are shrouded in secrecy. They are black boxes. And time has come for us as Nigerians to begin to hold to account those that we have elected and those that have been appointed into government to come clean to us of this. Because I don't even believe that the quantity of the adulterated product is as low as 100 million liters they are talking about. If it was, then 100 million liters is only about a, about a day's consumption of petrol in Nigeria. If only 100 million is adulterated, it shouldn't impact on the whole nation and start causing fuel scarcity in inland cities like Abuja. Because it will take many days for fuel to get to Abuja. So if it is just one day's uh, consumption that is adulterated and was recorded, how would there then be fuel scarcity in Abuja? So there's a lot that we're yet to be told, and we demand that the government must be very open and transparent to us. Okay, so, so let's also bring in Mark uh, Debayo at this point in time. Mark, so w a lot of persons woke up, you know, in different parts of the country, Lagos, Abuja and what have you, I mean, to the fact that, uh, you know, petrol stations are not selling the products. You could find the queues everywhere. Now, the government is saying that they are not deregulating. And so what could be responsible? Because from what we see, it feels like uh, the, the petrol stations are actually hoarding the product. And so w what is really responsible for this action? If government is not deregulating, why are the products being, you know, hoarded? Apart from the fact that the excuse that's been made is that you have adulterated product. And if you have adulterated product, then it would mean that the people didn't know that this product are adulterated. Would that be the reason for, you know, the cues that we have, which has actually resulted to uh, not making the product available? Well, the simple answer is that uh, the, those who are responsible for making petroleum products available to Nigerians are irresponsible because they are not doing their job very well. Um, I am waiting to see who and who will be punished for bringing petroleum products that are high, uh, have high content of methanol and ethanol to the country. So the NMDPRA is not is not talking to us, it's not communicating. We are not they are not talking to us. They are not giving us the the reasons why these things are, are, are happening. I mean, now multi billion dollars worth of uh, agricultural fuel was imported to the country. Now at a cost to the taxpayers of Nigeria. And it's a cost to, to motorists and commuters, you know, who are either paying for knockdown engines or people who are missing their, their flights, people who are missing their interviews, people who are getting to job late and being fired and all those things. So the people who are involved, who are responsible for making uh, these products available, are you responsible with their responsibilities? And that is why we are, we are where we are. And uh, if, you are, if you operate a system that does not punish criminal indiscretions, that is the kind of thing that you are. Who are the people? Who are responsible? You know, at this direct sale, direct purchase, DS, DSDP uh, initiative uh, of the NMDPR is, is, seems not to be working. I mean, there are probably some people are trying to sabotage it so that we can go back into paying people every day to import fuel products into the country. So, we have still not been told why our refineries are not working. Look at the Kaduna refinery that has not produced a liter of fuel in the last five years. But people are here drawing salaries, billions of naira worth of salaries every month. And, you know, you begin to wonder what kind of country is that? That people earn money for doing nothing, for producing nothing. We should just forget that we have these refineries, just throw down those things and, and let the workers go and find something else to do. Yes, of course, this is not the popular opinion of the labor unions, but I mean, is it even morally? Is it even morally correct for people to be drawing salaries for doing nothing? The, the refineries are not working. Why do we have refinery workers doing nothing and collecting billions of naira worth of salary every month? It, it, you see this uh, opaqueness in the particular industry. Unfortunately, one would have thought that with the promises well, of Ma the Ma on anti-corruption. I'm sorry to interject at this point. I, I'm still trying to understand, and I'm sure that a lot of Nigerians are also trying to understand why we have, you know, this product not being available, even though the NNPC has also come out to make a statement that, yes, they are ensuring that the supply gets across. 
and uh, the government has admitted that yes adulterated products were actually pumped into the market they found that in the value i mean the chain of supply so but what is is it that it's because of the we're experiencing the scarcity because up until this morning in lagos you still have the queues the queues have not ceased and so what could be responsible for this hoarding or the product not being available? Because some people will think that petrol stations are just hoarding the product. It's what a lot of Nigerians are trying to understand. Well, you know, the, the, the go we have, we have uh, successive governments. They have ready-made nebulous uh, answers to certain questions. They just give excuses that are absolutely unreasonable, that you cannot connect with the reality on ground. And that's what we are having. You are claiming that you, know, you are claiming responsibility because it's their responsibility. They are claiming that they imported methanol and ethanol into the country in the name of uh, PMS, petroleum, uh, petroleum premium, premium motor spirit, spirit mm. in, in, into the country. So the government has confirmed by itself that it brought in harmful product into the country for its citizens to use. So who is going to, who is somebody must go in for that? You know, it is at this time that irresponsible insane claims. You know, people should have resigned by now. The Minister of Petroleum Resources, who is the, the President himself, and the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, so these people should have resigned by now. And, uh, and the NMDPRO CEO should have gone by now. You know, so, I mean, because they are responsible. They are, they are the managers of our petroleum uh, resources. So, and they are responsible for bringing in ethanol and methanol into the country. That is, they are now claiming as an excuse. They are, I mean, in, in essence, the government is blaming itself for this artificial scarcity. And you know, somebody somewhere wanted to make uh, smart money. Just like in the days of President Shagari, when sand was being imported into the country in the name of fertilizer. Sand. People, people brought sand into Nigeria, imported sand into Nigeria, sand. And they claimed it was fertilizer. And it was, uh, and it was discovered and nobody got punished for it. Mark, Mark Adeb 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 yes, just to follow up and sorry to interrupt you, um, 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 my findings in the indicate that um, you know this is not the first time this is happening in Nigeria. And uh, for those who are watching us who live in Lagos, they may remember that in 2008, uh, we had the same problem. Uh, at that time, uh, the NNPC was not the sole importer of fuel into the country. And uh, a company called Oando, Oando was one of the importers of petrol into the country. There, there were issues with, with, with the fuel that Oando was bringing to the country. People complained that their engines were knocking, as we say in Nigeria. And Oando put out a statement um, basically saying they regretted the situation. And, and they, they went down to explain in detail what happened. Uh, that a particular Swiss, though they, it was called a Dutch company, but a particular Swiss company, who I will mention now, um, was a supplier of that consignment to them. 33,000 uh, metric tons of, of, of gasoline, and, and that was faulty. They said that at the time, um, the, the product went through the laid down procedures of the Nigerian regulatory system, which was handled then by DPR to check um, whether it was fit for consumption and whether the certificate uh, of fitness, um, as, as, as given at the point of origin, um, whether it met up to that standard that was on that certificate. Um, um, sir, in, in, in that 2008, um, Owando in that statement said they were going to sue this Swiss company. Um, and of course, the DPR made a statement saying that Nigerians you know, were free to, to claim damages, but they would have to you know, you know, verify each claim. The House of Representatives invited the DG of the DPR for a hearing and questioned him. And he said that they did not have the, the, the facilities in their laboratory to check for um, ethanol, as it was in that particular case, because it wasn't part of what the specification was for Nigerian premium motor spirit. Fast forward to 2022, we're still talking about this. The DPR is no more. Um, after that, that, that hearing by the House of Representatives, this particular company, sirs, was barred from doing business in Nigeria because obviously they brought into the country this petrol that was of specification of the grade that Nigeria deserved or requires. Now, this company is part of the 15 companies that, was, that were given... Um, uh, uh, were, were named by the NNPC and Melakari to be part of those to partake and approve to partake in the DSDP arrangement. This particular company that was barred by the Nigerian government from 2008. 
a part of those. And and my findings indicate that there's a history and um, of, of of corruption, sir, um, of, of 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 crime with certain companies, four or five Swiss companies that have been flagged by the Swiss government that have had to pay fines. You know, this particular company paid a fine of hundred million dollars to the Swiss government because it was it was um, fingered in a corrupt deal, corruption in Ivory Coast and in Congo. And these companies, from my findings, have continued to, to, to play in the oil and gas industry, in the petroleum downstream sector and midstream sector in Nigeria through corrupt deals. Four of them, four out of the five Swiss companies, are part of those who are named or who are given these DSTP uh, 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 contracts. And, and the, the UK um, um, a petroleum regulator calls them the the unknown knowns or the known unknown. So they have issues surrounding them. What, what do you say to this? The fact that we have these companies uh, um, uh, who are part of a, the DSTP arrangement. It, it's on record and, and, and investigating investigations have been done that reveal that these companies are known to, um, um, to mix or blend the petrol they send to West Africa just so that it can be, it can be um, uh, economized and they can make more money off it. And there are cases in point in Ivory Coast um, where a company called Trafigula or something dumped uh, what you call waste and dirty petrol. And these are the companies that the Nigerian government is doing business with. It. Methanol, it's not true what the, the NMDPRA is saying, sirs, that this, this product is regularly used in petrol. That's a lie. It's used either to reduce the harmful greenhouse gas effects of, 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 of the fuel or to economize it, to make it more. You know, but it's not used all the time. So that's a lie from a government agency. What do you say to this, sir? Well, substantially, you have answered your question by yourself. Um, but uh, the thing is that all, all we are experiencing is an interconnectivity of institutionalized corruption. You know, as a matter of fact, local and international interconnectivity of institutionalized corruption. Because um, uh, like you guess like. So the, the corrupt elements within the NMDPRA, which is a successor agency to the PPPRA, you know, will look for people they can do business with to, ma to maximize uh, the profits, to, to, I mean, which is illicit, illicit profit for themselves, at the expense of Nigerians who will be suffering the effect of this corruption. And, uh, and because we have not been able to develop a template for punishing corruption swiftly and aggressively, people continue to engage in, the, in corruption. What we have thought, actually, sincerely, uh, that um, the, the current uh, government will have fought corruption head on, especially uh, the petroleum, petroleum sector, you know, whether upstream, downstream, or midstream, you know, frontally. And uh, I was happy when the president confirmed himself as the president of, uh, I mean, as the minister for potato products. I, I mean, I believe that the things will, will go better, but it's not. It's not going. He needs to fire people. He needs to fire people. Whoever. No, no matter the number of people who are responsible for this terrible situation that we are passing through, he has to fire people, he has to hold people responsible. That is when he himself will not be held responsible for the scarcity we are going through. Currently in Abuja, if you must move around, you have to buy at the black market. Or you want to keep for like 10 hours. Or sleep at the uh, uh, filling station overnight. That is what you are going to, uh, going to happen to you. And that has been going on for almost two weeks now, here in Abuja. So, um, uh, if we don't hold people responsible for corruption and incompetency and deliberate act of this is deliberate act of economic sabotage, people have to the heads have to go for it. Mm. But unfortunately, in Nigeria, what we, we consider right. ethnicity, religion, okay. even when people commit crimes and we yeah. don't punish them, yes. it's quite unfortunate. Uh, All right, Nick, Nika, Julie, uh, what, what do you take of make of this 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 discovery that the companies that have been barred by the Nigerian government for doing this same thing as far back as 2008 have been brought in again uh, by this administration and giving contracts to supply fuel, and we're seeing the situation again. Well. For so long as, as Nigeria, we have refused to enforce the law. We have refused to hold people to account. We have refused to use the executive powers that are handed to political leaders to run the country to make people to behave well. We are going to continue to have these kind of issues. I agree very 100% uh, with my co panelist Mr. Debayo, that if it was in Senate clamps, what has happened, the misery and pains 
that Nigerians have been unnecessarily put through. Hence, with that road already, is either people responsible should have by now honorably resigned or forced into resignation and even criminal charges could have been pressed. In fact, if it was elsewhere, you will have class uh, cases now where motorists who have suffered losses either by broken down vehicles or their schedules um, as, uh, you know, uh, disrupted would have come together to sue those who are responsible for this kind of thing. So in Nigeria, we, we don't want to do these things. You know, people just behave anyhow, do anyhow. I mean, yesterday I was I was watching a, you know, a senator on, on TV. This man was responsible okay. for the death of many people in the National Stadium in Abuja whilst he was a minister of um, internal affairs. Now he's a senator of the federal government. So these are the kind of things that we are facing in Nigeria. But let me say one thing. Everywhere in the world, it is the people that hold leaders to account that makes them to behave well. In Nigeria, we sit docile. We receive all the punches from the people we have elected and appointed into government. And we are doing nothing about it. So, Nick Agulay... I speak to you today. Yes. Yeah. I I'm really sorry to interject. And that's because we're really out of time. Now, one would be thinking, because we remember in December, sometime where Lagos experienced some pipeline explosion. And then NMPC came out to say, with her, of course, you have a representative spokesperson for KRE saying, uh, the pipeline explosion would not disturb and disrupt, you know, the supply of petrol pro products, however. And uh, there are a lot of thoughts surrounding whether maybe that could also be an issue with the explosion uh, over pipelines. But, you know, that's on the one hand. But as we cost it down, uh, just in a few seconds, I'd like you to share your thought. What is the way forward of all of this? The queues are still here. It therefore means that the products are very scarce. Although you have the NNPC, the government saying we are ensuring that there's a lot of supplies. And so, you, you, you know, but this is just, you know, on the papers. Because in its real sense, uh, the product is not available. So in, in just a few sentences, what, what would be the way out of all of this right now? It's quite a difficult time for Nigeria. Like you had mentioned, inflation is also here. And I would also like um, uh, Mark also at day by or to also respond. Just in a few seconds, what's the way out? For me, in the short term, the NNPC now needs to work 24-7 to increase supply all over the nation at the scarcity goals. In the medium term, the NNPC or the Nigerian government should allow other people to also import petrol. Why will NNPC be the sole monopoly of importing petrol? And of course, for the long term, our refineries need to work. This is a commitment that this current government made to us. All right. Let's have Mark also share his thoughts on that. What, what do you think will be the way forward? We're still experiencing what it is despite government's statement and efforts saying we're making this product available, but you can see in Lagos that uh, the product is not here. The immediate uh, response I want now is that I want to see who, those who brought metal ethanol into the country. I want to see them in handcuffs. I want to see them in court. I want to see people fired. I want to be, see people held responsible for this terrible situation. And then, of course, whatever we are going to do, whatever is going to cost us, we need to get our, our refineries working. And we need whoever is going to be president in 2023 must be for us not only promises, but how is going to get these refineries working. Until our refineries uh, uh, begin to work again, this type of decision will continue to, re to repeat itself. And that we just have to get our refineries working. That is what I think is the long, long term solution to this. For now, the government has to do whatever it has to do to ensure that the products are the product is available for Nigerians. But however, they're going to do it. That's their problem. They just have to do it. And, and, and uh, let us off this All right. terrible you know, suffering. All right. We, we have to go. Thank you very much, Nick uh, Jule, as a public affairs analyst. Uh, also, Mark Adebayo, a public affairs analyst. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your, your time and your expert analysis. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much. And have a nice day. Thank you. You too.
Mercy, it's a, it's a, a very, very um, sensitive issue. And I, I do hope that we can get to the bottom of this. I do hope that Nigerians actually get, you know, it, it's been very difficult. The cost of transportation is on the high as we speak right now. And we're just hoping that beyond the statement that's been put out by government, there will be actual supply of this product. Well, we step on the brakes right now. And when we return, we'll be looking at ASU strike in Nigeria and the implications for the educational sector. What is the way forward for the Nigerian student? Please stay with us. We'll be right back.